Welcome to my channel. Was Jeffrey Epstein murdered? And if he was, what does it matter? That's what I'm going to talk about. But before I do that, I have to thank each and every one of you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for liking them, for commenting on them, for sharing them. And thank you most of all for subscribing. I really appreciate all the people that are subscribing. I'm very thankful for it. So thank you very much. News came out today that Jeffrey Epstein's brother has been trying to find out what happened to his brother. And it looks like he was murdered. Let me give you the floor to just walk us through. Give us, give us the, you know, the elevator pitch on why you do not believe your brother killed himself. Well, let me first start off by saying that when I found out that he was dead, uh, I, I heard it on CNN. So the government didn't notify me, as they've claimed in their report. I heard it on television. And at first, I just assumed that, well, I had no reason to doubt it and that he decided to kill himself. Uh, so I respected that. I expect I respected that as his decision. He didn't have any children. Uh, our parents are gone. He would know he didn't have to worry about me. He had no other close you know, relatives. So I just assumed that that was the case. But then uh, the next day, they performed the autopsy. And just as a precaution, I had, uh, we had hired Dr. Michael Barden to witness the autopsy, which I have the right to do. And the city pathologist, Dr. Roman, and Dr. Barden came out of the autopsy saying that they could not call this a suicide because it looked too much like a homicide. And you know, make it clear that Dr. there's nobody who has more experience with prison deaths than Dr. Barden. And he said he's never seen these results, these like three broken bones in Jeffrey's neck from a suicidal hanging like this. So then the questions became, uh, you know, if he didn't commit suicide, then he was killed. And then who killed him? How how was it done? Uh, so these questions started coming up. And then uh, Attorney General Barr came out publicly and, and said a real asinine statement. He said that he saw he personally saw the videotape of the camera that was on outside of the tier where you could see the tier door. Explain tier. A, uh, that's the, the floor where Jeff cell was. You go into a door. And it's a corridor with four cells on either side of that corridor. And at the far end of that corridor, you, there's a camera that faces towards the door. So anything that takes place on that tier, you know, outside of the cells, could be viewed by that camera. Well, miraculously, that camera was not functioning that night. But the camera outside of the tier, which showed the door, and it's also that showed that the guards were not doing their jobs, they were surfing the net or napping, that camera was working. So Bill Barr referred to that camera saying that he saw that nobody went in or out of the tier. So that convinced him it was a suicide. And when I heard him make that statement, I thought he's either the, the dumbest guy on the planet or he's covering something up because for two reasons. One, to presume that somebody could get to that door, go in undetected, you know, kill somebody and go out and leave undetected is ridiculous because there are six levels of security before you get to that tier. This was the maximum security place in the prison. So that didn't make any sense. And then when he said he personally saw the videotape, watched the videotape, I thought, but this is the attorney general of the United States. Could I see him sitting by a monitor watching a night's worth of videotape to see that nobody went in or out? Couldn't he have people in his office watch the videotape and just say nobody went in or out. So when I heard he that he personally watched the videotape and he concluded that it was a suicide because nobody went in or out, I said, this is bullshit, if I'm allowed to say that on air. You are, you know, yeah. Because there were, yeah, there were, there were, I think, 11 other prisoners on that tier in the cells that could have killed him. Because I heard early on in, in my investigations, I heard through somebody from a kind of reliable source that cell doors were left unlocked. So if cell doors were left unlocked, I don't know how many or which ones, but somebody could have gone out, killed him, went back into his cell, and that's how it was done. Mm -hmm. So, 
Okay, I'm going to put the link in the description so you can watch the whole video yourself. I think this is just another example of how disgustingly corrupt our system has become. I don't know if it's like this in other countries, but in America now, in federal law enforcement, there are no ethics, there's no honesty, there's no truth. It's all part of the buddy-buddy system. Jeffrey Epstein, I'm sure you know, was involved in trafficking underage girls to wealthy and very influential people, including well-known politicians. And I'm certain that none of those people want their names to come out as having been involved in that, although some have already. But they would do anything to prevent that, and I have no doubt that they can afford to pay a prisoner in that cell block to take Epstein out. If you watch the whole video, you'll hear that uh, there are a number of things that indicate that he did not commit suicide. One thing was they claimed that he was found with the rope around his neck and um, his buttocks about an inch off the floor. But if that were true, if that's how he killed himself, then if you know anything about how what happens to the body when you die, all the blood in his body would descend down to the lower parts and his legs and his buttocks would be filled with blood. They call it lividity. And they would be purple. But his legs were not purple and neither was his buttocks. So that means he was not vertical when he died. And he was not laying down when he died on his back because the blood would have been in the back, in the buttocks and the legs, and it wasn't there. So something is really, really fishy. And uh, if you look at the autopsy photo, it looks like someone strangled him with the rope. That's what it looks like. But my point in bringing this to you is to show you that once again, our system of government, our, our law enforcement system is just hopelessly corrupted. It would be my desire if I was put in power in the United States to eliminate, completely eliminate the Department of Justice and start over. Just take the whole thing out and start a brand new department and hire new people. Because the people that are in office there now are hopelessly corrupt. They're, 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 they're compromised beyond uh, repair. And it's disgusting to me. When I was a young man, I used to believe in the justice system in America. I don't anymore. There's a lot of things I don't believe in about America anymore. I lost faith in the medical system over the COVID thing. It's just, we don't have anybody with any courage or any conviction or any ethics at all in government, it doesn't look like. I'm sure there are some, some places, but very few that have the guts to stand up and speak out. And it's sad. It is really sad. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but that's what it is. And for you, my viewers, I pray that you'll be abundant, that you'll live a long life, and that you'll be healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray he'll do the same for everyone that you love. And I also pray that you'll be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you'll make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.